What's going on, everyone? I'm Brandon, and this is the Greening the Desert Project. We've had major success in the last few years with all the different earthworks, which include swales, zuni bowls, check dams, and emiloons. But stopping the water is only half the battle. And even though I haven't shown this for a while, this is actually a major component in helping restore our landscape. And that means we have to start feeding the land using the captured water in our basins. And since we're coming into wintertime, we're not really having to use as much water for watering plants. And so I'm actually going to be using some core principles of stacking functions. So we're going to be getting multiple uses out of one single resource. So yes, we are brewing compost tea. But to truly scale this project, we need more basins to catch every drop from sheet flow. And that brings us to the famous demi loons. or so you'd think. And everyone talks about the half moons or these demi loons, but quite frankly, and in my honest opinion, they're very boring. And I don't think they blend into the landscape very well. So today I'm gonna show you why I've moved past the demi loons and we're taking advantage of the natural resources on our own property, but we're building a way better looking and more effective alternative, the Zuni bowl. So the demi loon is a popular structure or a popular concept for harvesting water. And I think Mr. Andrew Millison has made that quite popular amongst uh, the community here. But either way, it is an earthwork that does harvest water on slopes and works in some landscapes, pretty much in most landscapes, unless you're just solid rock, like in our case, in a lot of our spots here. But these demi loons actually kind of have a few flaws to them, so I just want to at least point those out, which are the erosion risk. It's basically because we're gathering all of that water and the only exit point that we're creating is out either side on those corners because that's where the water is outflowing. And so unless we're putting in extra work, which means stacking rocks or preventative measures for keeping that from eroding even more. We still have to do extra work. We still have more work to do with this. But that's where just this bare earth concept of the demi loon just makes it more vulnerable just makes it more vulnerable to erosion and especially just how hard the rain comes down here. And in just my opinion, I think they're pretty boring, and for most people, I don't even think they've really even noticed on the landscape that we have done demi loons. And then even past this point. And we can look back on plenty of the videos to see that just should give the example a little bit that those are boring so no one even notices them but we have done a few of these and they do produce results they are capturing water they're slowing down the momentum and they're sinking that water but also collecting sediment and aiding in growing things around here Watch my step. so another maybe better option in my opinion at least, is the Zuni Bowl. And the Zuni Bowl is actually an ancient practice utilized by the Zuni Hopi Pueblo people. And it's simple, basic, and super effective. Our Zuni Bowl area. Look, even our middle pit. Caught some water. That's super cool. So our little design here worked. Now there's a few different features that are different from the Demi Loon, but we're actually looking at very similar qualities for stopping, slowing, and harvesting rainwater and also sediment. But what's different with the Zuni Bowl is that its original purpose is to help disperse the water, similar to the sheet flow spreader that I covered in the previous video. So if you haven't watched that one, watch that video after this one. So in the Zuni Bowl sense, we're having the rocks line the whole bowl, and in that way we're capturing all the organic material and the sediment that ends up dropping into the bowl. And that's the concept is for the water to 
drop into the bowl, slowly rise up, and then slowly disperse and spread across a landscape. But what's really cool about this concept is that we can adapt it to certain conditions or certain parts of our landscape. So now we can take the Zuni Bowl concept and actually compare it or actually do a side-by-side -side next to the Demi Loons on this other little water path. So we know that the water is flowing down this way and so we can actually interrupt that flow and this is where we're gonna create a few of our Zuni Bowls across here. And these are gonna be slightly different from the other bowl shapes because we're gonna make these a little bit more kidney shaped and that's just to follow a similar shape as the Demi Loon. But in this way, we're actually capturing a lot more of the water in the bowl itself. And then we're gonna be using a lot of the excavated material for building up the berm. And then that way we can stack more rocks and basically make this like a Zuni Bowl check dam kind of thing. And so in that way, at least for this Zuni Bowl right here, we'll end up capturing the water and having it fill up and divert out the side and continue its path that it originally had taken. But we'll notice that this is actually in line with our other two Zuni Bowls that I had done last year that are across our rolling dip section. So now we're gonna have this nice little Zuni Bowl path staggered down the pathway here. And in that way, we're gonna be capturing a whole lot more sediment and water in a lot of these spots. Now the one big advantage that we're gonna have with the Zuni Bowl opposed to the Demi Loons is that with the rocks, we're essentially going to be creating a lot of rock mulching. So a really dense material that's gonna shade and cover a whole lot of the soil underneath and help protect and hold in more of that moisture. And in that way, we'll get way more growth coming out in between the rocks and especially as the finer sediment and organic material gathers up inside of the bowl, that'll further promote more of the growth inside the bowl and outside and around it. See, you don't get that with the Demi Loon. You gotta do extra work still. You gotta put mulch down or do something to cover the whole soil. All right, so now how are we using our rainwater since we're not using it on the garden so much. And actually, I know there's something that people have been wondering about, especially when it comes to rainwater catchment and our biosand filter that I had done a video on last year. So I was actually able to pick up a water tester, which this is a cactoli, 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 lili, lili. But I've got this six in one water tester, and it's mainly a six in one water quality tester. So this is pretty much used for your tap water, your purified water, groundwater, stuff like that. But in our case, we actually can test our rainwater and then we actually can do a test on our biosand filter and the different readings that we're gonna get from our water and then also from the more purified water. And what's actually cool about this uh, water tester is that it has six in one functions. So we're actually looking at, it's able to measure the COD, the TOC, Oh, what am I talking about? Like, let's get some some actual words people can understand. Okay, so the COD is the chemical oxygen demand. So like the oxygen consumption. I might have to look more about that up. But then we've got TOC, or the total organic carbon. Also got the TDS, which is our total dissolved solids. And our EC, which is the electrical conductivity. And then this thing actually has an ultraviolet sense to it. Okay, so that is measuring the indirect chlorine content, and then also it's picking up other organic material, basically, that are reflecting ultraviolet light. So it's just another way of picking up organic materials or aromatic kind of compounds that are in the water. So just another further way to test the quality of the water in there. See, there's some of these things that I've never really looked into, I guess, for what's in the water. I don't think any of that matters because this is all the readings put together for you where it just has four different readings, basically poor, medium, poor, high, and good quality. So that's all we're looking for. All right, we're gonna test the rain catchment. Oh, look at that. Seeing the water's poor. Poured some water through the biosand filter. We'll check this. 
Nice. We got excellent water in this. Nowadays, you don't even know the quality of your water. Some places it's bad water, and you never know. You don't even know what's coming out of your tap. But now we know at least a little bit more about the quality of our rainwater, especially this water's just been sitting for a little bit. If you want to pick up the Cactoli 6-in-1 water tester, I got you the discount code GTO15 at checkout. So go to the link down below. Remember, this helps support the channel, so thank you. I don't think anybody realized how excellent quality of water that we got up here. But since we've got really good quality water, we're gonna end up using that water from the biosand filter, which contains beneficial bacteria to actually help clean that water. So that water, we're gonna be brewing into the tea, so contributing more beneficial microbes, and brewing this tea with our pile of compost that we have, and then also our pile of wood chips that we have down below that most people don't really realize that we have as well. We've got wood chips and we've got compost. We've got a pile of cow manure too, so. So I've mixed all these ingredients together, but then I've also added some dry amendments that have some single microorganisms in there that are just beneficial for plant growth and such. So I've added these to the tea. So we've got a really nice concoction of a diversity of microorganisms for this. And then it's also gonna be helpful with the mycelium and the different fungi that we're getting on the wood chips and the compost. So this will be the first use with the rainwater is brewing the tea. So now that I've built the demi loons and the zuni bowls, we can take the tea and I've got my chapin sprayer, which is a concrete sprayer. So I'm going to take the so I'm going to take the tea and spray the zuni bowls and the demi loons and hopefully in that way we'll get a good jump start to these earthworks and get a lot more diversity of the microorganisms. So we'll be able to check back and see how these have done in the coming weeks. So I'll be able to dilute this tea down using one gallon to a five gallon bucket. So a one to five ratio there. So we're kind of making six gallons total a little bit, but I'll be able to spread this out way further for one because we're not so much looking at the nutrient value as we're looking at the diversity of microorganisms that are essential for breaking down organic material, all these different minerals in our soil, and making nutrients available to all this new vegetation and the existing vegetation around here. So we could get away with a little bit more of a dilution, but I've done a one to five ratio so not only have I done the Zuni bulls and the Demi Loons down below, but I've come up top and started doing a lot of the other earthworks and actually spraying a lot of the hay patches where the goats have been. I mean, and quite frankly, I'm just spraying it everywhere. I'm just going all over the place because we just want coverage of these microorganisms everywhere because we need them everywhere, anywhere and everywhere. We need all the workers. So now not only with spraying the tea and diluting it down to maximize the effectiveness, but also the efficiency of the tea, now with the leftover material that I've gotten from brewing, now we can actually take that and we can spread that out pretty thin, almost like a 1% kind of coverage, I, just for numbers sake. So we can just throw this out by the handful a little bit. And in that way, the remaining microorganisms that are that are attached to the organic particles and sticks and stuff like that. We're gonna spread that out further and then that material's already had a little bit of a pre-soak to allow the microorganisms to continue to thrive hopefully, but then also spread in the ground as well. And then we've also added more food source and more mulching. So now that we've got our two side-by-side -side comparisons of two different earthworks, it'll be exciting to actually get the rain in the future. Maybe we'll get some rain through the winter time to actually see some sheet flow and see some of these work. We might be waiting on the rain for a little bit, so we're actually going to head over to the... We carve the earth with patient hands We build a world from barren lands A song of rain, a dance of soil Life reborn through love and toil the desert breathes, it sings, it hums, it blooms beneath the beating drum. Grow trees! 
disagree.